vertical. The latency is immediate. It occurs immediately on assuming a particular position. There is no fatigability. There is no habituation. The intensity of the nystagmus is mild and it is very well reproducible. The VOR reflexes are hyperactive. The gate is wide-based gate, just like the cerebellar gate. And then, of course, you have the CNS finding or other brainstem findings. Peripheral vertigo is due to a defect of the vestibular apparatus or due to a lesion in the vestibular apparatus. The most common cause of vertigo is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Vestibular neuronitis, labyrinthitis, autotoxins, autoimmune diseases of the inner ear, Meniere's disease, all cause peripheral vertigo. In central vertigo, the vestibular apparatus of both the ears are normal. There is a problem of balance because of the other two systems, the visual system and the proprioceptive sensory system. It could be due to migraine, very common cause of central vertigo. 25% of the patients of migraine do have vertigo. It could be due to degenerative disorders of the brainstem, tumors impinging on the brainstem, tumors of the CP angle, cerebellopontine angle, particularly acoustic neuronoma or schwannoma, vertebral basilar insufficiency, basilar artery migraine, multiple sclerosis, or maybe due to spinomotor problems like cervical vertigo, where the motor tracts and the long tracts, the sensory tracts of the spinal cord are de I mean, either degenerated or they are compressed due to various causes of the cervical region. And these are some of the central causes of vertigo. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV. It is an episodic vertigo, occurs with head movements. Whenever the patient rolls over in the bed or lying down to one side, sitting up from the lying down position, leaning forward to pick up something, turning the head in the horizontal plane, all these movements cause giddiness. The giddiness is very short-lived for a few seconds. Symptoms of BPPV are worse in the morning and nausea is typically present but there is no associated vomiting. History of head trauma may be present. Episodes of vertigo and BPPV, as I said earlier, last for very few, very short time, a few seconds. In vestibular neuronitis and labyrinthitis, the vertigo lasts for hours and days in contrast to BPPV. What is the pathophysiology of BPPV? We know that there are what are called autoconia autolits in the utricle and saccule. And these are calcium carbonate stone-like particles. And these are attached to the hair cells on the membrane inside the utricle and sac tube. This utricle is connected to the three semicircular canals. The autolyths may become displaced from the utricle by aging, head trauma or labyrinthine disease. The autolyths usually collect as debris inside the utricle and when the patient changes the position, this debris is shifted into one of the semicircular canals most usually the posterior semicircular canal. These autolyths, when they enter the semicircular canals, they stimulate the hair cells or the cilia inside the canals and then cause vertigo. Posterior semicircular canal is the most often affected canal. This is an animated representation of the collection of the autolytic debris in the utricle and the shift of the debris into the semicircular canals due to change in the position of the head and the consequent vertigo, which is the BPPV mechanism. This is a good illustration of how we can imagine the debris, the auto autolytic debris causes the vertigo. BPPV can be best diagnosed by using this Hall-Pike position test or Dick's Hall-Pike test. First warn the patient about the symptoms of vertigo during this test. Patient is seated close to the end of the couch. Patient's eyes must be open so that we can observe the nystagmus. Turn the patient's head with your hands to about 45 degrees to the left first and then to the right to test the left and the right vestibular apparatus. 
with your hands on either side of the patient's head, lay the patient down rapidly, as quickly as possible, until the head is dependent, hanging over the edge of the couch. Then check for vertigo, the symptomatic vertigo, and nystagmus in the patient's eyes. The first phase of the nystagmus should be upbeat towards the forehead of the patient and it should be towards the same side of the head movement that is to the left in this particular context. Bring the patient to the upright position once again. Now the nystagmus may be observed again in the opposite direction. Patient feels that the room is spinning now in the opposite direction. This is the dix halpike test. We can see the animated representation of this in the next. The treatment of BPPV vertigo is not by drugs. It is by a maneuver called Eplis maneuver. In fact, there are several types of maneuvers which are used to treat BPPV depending on which particular semicircular canal is affected. For the posterior semicircular canal, which is the one most commonly affected, Eplis maneuver is the one that is used. In this maneuver, the patient is seated upright far enough back on, on the couch so that his head will hang over the edge of the couch when he is laid back. His head is turned 45 degrees to the affected side. In this case, let us say his affected side is left side. We turn the head to the left side. How do we know that left side is affected? By doing the dix Halpike test. Place your hands on either side of the patient's head and guide the patient down to the head dependent position. Rotate the head 90 degrees to the opposite side. In this case, from left to the right with the face upward and the head in the dependent position. Ask the patient to roll onto his right side while holding the head in this position. Then rotate the head so that it is facing now downward. Raise the patient to a sitting position maintaining the same head rotation. Then rotate the head back into the central position. This looks a little bit complicated to hear, but when we see the next slide where there is an animated representation, it becomes very familiar. I will also demonstrate to you how it can be done by taking a volunteer from one of you. Happily, step one, patient is seated on the couch in such a way that when he lays down, his head will be hanging from the edge of the couch. Happily, step two, if the examiner's both hands on the head, the patient's head is rotated 45 degrees towards the affected side, in this particular case towards the left side. A play step 3, patient is suddenly made to lie down with the head hanging from the edge of the couch, holding the head with both the hands, but still keeping the head towards the left side. A play step 4, patient's head is held with the head hanging from the edge of the couch and turn towards the left side in the same position as earlier for at least a minute. At least step 5, now the examiner rotates the patient's head exactly 90 degrees to the opposite direction. That is from the left side, we rotate the patient's head towards the right side in this particular instance. At least step 6, keeping the patient's head to the right side as before, we now ask the patient to turn and roll on to his right side, his right shoulder touching the couch. A place step 7, keeping the patient rotated on to his right side on the couch, now the examiner turns the head of the patient towards the ground such that the face faces the ground and the patient looking at the ground. A place step 8, patient's face facing the ground, patient looking at the ground, we keep the patient in this position for at least a minute. Apply step 9. Patient's face still facing the ground. Now patient tries to raise up and then we make the patient sit up on the couch helping with both of our hands to support his head. Apply step 10. Now the patient is fully seated on the couch with his legs hanging onto the right side of the couch. We still support his head with both the hands. At least step 11, the patient keeps the same position as earlier, but now the examiner bends the patient's head 45 degrees forward. And this is the final epilis step. With these 11 steps, the epilis maneuver is complete and the debris in the semicircular canals will be redeposited back 
into the utricle and thus curing the BPTV.